coming to you from deep inside the bowels of a great big empty. Get ready for another episode of The Home Defense Show with Skip Coriel. Hello, American families. Welcome to this week's episode of The Home Defense Show. I'm your host, Skip Coriel. And if you love your family, care about them deeply, and want to learn how to protect them in every facet of your life, then you've come to the right place. We got a great show for you today. We have Rick Ector from Legally Armed in Detroit and from Rick's Firearms Academy. Uh, Rick is going to be talking about his big event he had last weekend where he trained hundreds of women to shoot pistols, many of them for the first time in their life. So we're going to have Rick on in segments two and three. Going to be a great, lively discussion and it'll be entertaining, educational, as always, with Rick Ector from Legally Armed in Detroit. What is going on in my life? Whoa, man. You know, it's mushroom season. I was having a really good morel hunting season, but then my back went out on me. I hate when that happens. I was out there finding hundreds of morel mushrooms, and I was out, well, three or four hours a day, you know, climbing up and down hills, you know, hunched over, looking on the ground. And that was apparently too much for my 61-year-old spinal column <laughs> to handle. And, oh, I woke up one morning and, oh, gosh, did it hurt. It hurt like crazy. So I haven't been mushroom hunting in, in like a week. And, yeah, oh, it was kind of sad. It was a sad day. Uh, at the Coriel household, but hey, what can you do? It's part of growing older. So I've got about 11 months to get back in shape, build up my core. I'm going to strengthen my stomach muscles, my back muscles. And so next year, I won't have this problem. Lots of things going on over here. We're getting ready to plant our garden, if it ever stops raining, that is. We're going to plant some kale and some cauliflower, some broccoli, some watermelon for the kids. Uh, you know, a bunch of stuff. Uh, my, my wife is into greens uh, this year, so we're going to plant a bunch of that stuff, get that growing. Next month, we will be heading out to Oregon, not Oregon, Oregon, uh, the home state where my wife grew up. I always hate going there. Uh, not because, you know, of my relatives, but just because I can't carry my gun there. I, it just drives me bonkers because I know it's, there are viable threats, when you're, especially when you're out on the road. But I can carry from here all the way to the Oregon state line. Then I've got to unload my guns and lock them up and put them in a gun safe for three weeks. Oh, I may not survive. But I will be doing the Home Defense Show from out in Oregon. That is about a month from now. So stay tuned for that. I was in uh, Grand Rapids just yesterday. I was down at uh, Wood Radio in the parking garage there. I hate the parking garage downtown. And I had, uh, you know, did my business and I was getting ready to leave and I, I pulled up to the gate where you pay for parking and I put my parking ticket in there and of course I'm on a heightened state of awareness like I always am in, in parking garages and it asked for my credit card I put my credit card in there no problem and then a guy comes around the corner and he is only about 30 feet away from me and he started walking towards my car the gate is down I can't back up, I can't go forward, and he starts pointing his finger at me and talking. And I immediately went into self-defense overdrive because he's walking right up to my car. And my window was down, my credit card's in the machine, and this guy, he wasn't wearing a three-piece suit, okay? He just, I just had bells and whistles going off all over the place and so I immediately hit the uh, the window button my and my electric window 
went all the way up. And he, by now, he's at the hood of my car, and he's waving for me, uh, you know, to get my attention. And I just, I went down and I uh, lifted up the shirt. I put my hand on my pistol, and I held out my hand uh, for him to stop. And I just wagged my finger back and forth, and I said, no. He looked at the windshield. Uh, he must have seen my hand on my gun because he stopped and I said no again and then he turned and he walked away. Now, some people might say, yeah, maybe that was an overreaction. Well, I don't think so. I'm sitting in a car. I'm buckled in. I can't go anywhere. And if I hadn't done anything, then he'd have walked up to the open window while I'm buckled in my car, and he could have done anything to me. I would have been at a severe tactical disadvantage. Now think about it for a second, folks. How many of you, if you saw a car paying their parking fee with the window down, how many of you would walk up to that car and try to talk to the person through the window? Probably none of you. Why? Because that's not normal. Whenever you're out and about like that, you're looking for things that aren't normal. This was a potentially dangerous situation. I think I handled it just fine. All's well that ends well. He turned, he walked away, nobody got shot, nobody got robbed. Uh, hey, it was a good day, right? But some people might say, well, yeah, but you put your hand on your gun. Well, yeah, I can't draw my gun if I don't have my hand on it. At any moment in time, he could have displayed a firearm, a knife. Um, he was about a half a second away from the, the, the window. If I hadn't rolled the window up, he would have had free access to me. So I think what I did tactically was pretty good stuff. Um, the fact that I was aware, I saw him coming before he got there, uh, was a good thing. And I'm pretty happy the way that it turned out. My point is, stay aware, especially in those transitional spaces. When you're in your car, uh, you know, and the window's down like that, you're stopped, you can't go forward, you can't go back. That is a vulnerable situation, folks. Stay alert there, stay aware. Now, obviously, I didn't draw my firearm because that would have been uh, an escalation uh, that was unnecessary because he hadn't displayed a firearm. Chances are, the guy was probably a panhandler, right? Well, one, I didn't want to give him money. Most of those guys, they're not poor people who are down on their luck. They're homeless people who are homeless by choice. Uh, they're on drugs. Uh, they're alcoholics. They can't live a normal life. But it's because of choices that they've made, bad choices. I'm not going to give them more money so that they can go out and get drunk and buy more drugs. Uh, they want money. Go get a job. Hold it down. Uh, do what you got to do. Okay? Get tough. But I'm not going to let him walk up to my car uh, with my window open while I am totally at their mercy. That's not going to happen for me. All right. Okay, let's uh, head for the news now. I saw this news item. It's on Fox News. It says, man living in modern treehouse arrested on suspicion of burglary, cops say. Now, where do you think this happened? Just take a guess. What state does this strike you as? Let's read it. Can someone accused of a crime be placed under treehouse arrest? <laughs> California cops may soon find out. You know, only in California do people live in treehouses. Nutty people. I think half the people in California are homeless now. A man living in a well-disguised California treehouse built so solidly, even cops complimented it, 
is accused of stealing several items from a nearby house and garage last month, police said Thursday. Mark Robert Duda, 56, of Pomona, was living in what officials described as a well-built and modern treehouse when police arrested him on suspicion of burglary. Police said Duda broke into a Ganesha Hills home and stole multiple items April 18. And there's a, there's a picture of the treehouse here. It's rather rustic. It's built out of logs. Uh, you know, but I'm thinking, you know, I'm 61. At 56 years old, I wasn't living in a treehouse. And, oh boy, what would that say if you're, if you're living in a treehouse? And whose property was this? I mean, he was, it was probably either public land or private land, and he built a treehouse on it. Uh, I, don't, I don't know. I'm just, uh, I'm not feeling warm and fuzzy about this. The home's actual residents said they got a quick glance at the burglar and told police the man looked familiar, according to KTLA. A police helicopter and a canine were used to track the man down. The treehouse contained many essentials, such as a fire pit, barbecue, and lighting, police said. The treehouse also came with a picturesque view featuring the San Gabriel Mountains and the National Hot Rod Association's Museum, according to the Los Angeles Times. Duda was arrested on suspicion of burglary. He was being held on $50,000 bail pending a court hearing. You know, I'm guessing he's not going to make that bail, uh, $50,000. He's living in a treehouse. Uh, <laughs> well, we wish the best of luck to Mark Robert Duda, 56, of Pomona, California. Jeez. All right. Well, hey, we are about out of time for this segment. When we come back, we will have Rick Ector from Legally Armed in Detroit and from Rick's Firearms Academy in Detroit, Michigan. Uh, Rick's going to be talking about his event he had last week where he trained hundreds upon hundreds of women how to shoot firearms. While we are away, I want you to go ahead and check out our sponsors, firearmslegal.com slash Midwest Tactical, and also Center Shot Indoor Gun Range, Indoor Michigan, where it's always a perfect 70 degrees. While you're checking that out, you go to their homepage on Facebook, and you will see that Center Shot Gun Range is hosting a book signing for myself and for Colonel Denny Gillum from Frontlines Freedom Radio and for Rick Weist from the Flowerland uh, Garden Radio Show. All three of us, uh, plus Ruth Price, um, will have books that we will be signing and selling from noon to four at Center Shot Indoor Gun Range. Go to centershotgunrange.com to check that out or on Facebook. When we come back, we'll be speaking with Rick Ector from Legally Armed in Detroit. This is Skip Coriel on the Home Defense Show. Don't go anywhere. We will be right back. My name is C.J. Coriel. Welcome to the Home Defense Show with my dad, Skip Coriel. Don't go nowhere. We'll be right back. Would you like to take your tactical and marksmanship training to the next level? If the answer is yes, you need to check out Center Shot Indoor Gun Range just south of Grand Rapids, conveniently located off US-131. Center Shot is one of the most advanced firing ranges in Michigan. Center Shot firing lanes have nearly 100 customizable shooting programs to make you better no matter what your skill level. Our advanced lanes allow a more immersive training experience to enhance your senses. Controlled lighting and target movement mean that you get the best practice and most fun out of Center Shot Indoor Gun Range. Memberships are available for as low as $150. 
CenterShot also offers a 10% discount to U.S. military veterans. So, no matter what the weather, hot, cold, or in between, CenterShot indoor gun range is always a perfect 70 degrees. This is where I train every week, and so should you. Find out more by going to centershotgunrange.com or call them at 616-371-7468. Stay safe, and I'll see you at CenterShot Indoor Gun Range. This is Colonel Danny Gillum. I host Front Lines of Freedom, a weekly syndicated military talk radio show. One of my co-hosts is Skip Coriel, the host of this show. We cover things that impact military and veteran communities, and we do it from the veteran's perspective. The show is broadcast across the nation and is also available as a podcast on our website, FrontlinesOfFreedom.com. Please join Skip and me weekly on Frontlines of Freedom. Okay, folks, welcome back to the Home Defense Show. This is your host, Skip Coriel. Today, we are speaking with one of my heroes on the east side of the state, none other than Rick Ector, the man, Rick Ector, the legend. Rick, welcome to the Home Defense Show. Hey, man, how are you? I'm doing great, man. Thanks for once again having me on the show. And hopefully, 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 I can live up to that billing that you just gave me, man. <laughs> I am truly flattered, truly. Well, I I think you probably can. I, actually, Rick, I think you've already done it. I mean, geez, you know, anybody that can do what you what you did, you and your team, just this past weekend is just incredible. But before we get into what you did, we'll hold the people in suspense just a little bit longer. Rick Ector, who the flying lip lock is Ector from Michigan? Want me to answer that question? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hey, know yourself, right? I mean, you man, certainly know I, who you, you know, are. Well, I, I'm going to tell you, man. It, it's been it's been a long road, but it's been an interesting road, and it's it, it's been one that that's really it's it's really curious and interesting each day that I have left on this planet. Many years ago, I'm going back 13, 14. Gee, I even lose count. I got robbed <laughs> in my own driveway, man. Yeah. And you know what? It, it was a watershed, life-changing moment for me. I decided to take on a more active role in my personal protection and quit listening to these anti-gun, locally elected politicians. I did that. I bought a gun, took a CPL class, and I just just devoured any information I could get my hands on to take on a more active role in my personal protection. I finally decided to become an instructor with the National Rifle Association, learned all I could. And as I loved guns, I started to become an advocate of armed citizens defending their families and their homes. And I was doing that for a number of years with, certif- with uh, several certifications. And then a, a few years into that, man, I saw a local, uh, n- local news program that was talking about this woman whose body was found just naked and, and, and in the street, man. And it bothered me. And, and ironically, this very day today, if you go on the news today, as we're talking and yesterday, they're talking about another woman's body, brutalized, raped and killed, thrown in the street. And then just a couple of days before that, a woman whose bloody body was discarded in one of those huge trash bins. And so really I'm having deja vu right here, man. And so eight years ago, I was thinking, well, you know what? Somebody should do something, man. Help the women, empower themselves, protect themselves, protect their families. So what can I do? What can I do? What can I do? You know, you look at who you are, where you are, you know, what skills and tools you have. And I say, well, look, let me partner with this gun range to see if they'll just let me have, you know, some time for free, donate it, and I'll just put out a social media invitation to any woman who wanted some free how to operate a handgun, how to shoot, you know, just pay for it out of my pocket. Mm -hmm. And luckily for me, that first time I did this, man, 50 women took me up on my offer. You know, some of them might have thought I was a weirdo and they were just curious to see what was going on. But they found out that I'm a regular guy who just cares about protecting women. And so, emboldened, man. I just started doing it 
every year. You know, went from 50 to 100 to 200, 400, you know, like 500, 600. Last year was 700. And we did it again, man. We did it again this past Sunday. Uh, we had 814. Now, when I say we, I mean we. I didn't just say me, just Rick. Rick cannot train 814 <laughs> people all by himself. Not going to happen. Live through it. <laughs> no. I uh, I, I want to give it up to Top Gun, Range Out, and Taylor for donating their range for the day. A literal army of firearms instructors. I can't name each and every single firearms instructor. But what I can do, I can quickly run through a lot of the groups that participated, man. I do want to pay particularly attention to Phoenix Ammo. Phoenix Ammo came out on top, man. F-E-N-I-X Ammo. 7,000 rounds, man. Wow, um, that's awesome. Michigan Gun Owners, 5,000 rounds of 9mm ammo. Mm. Michigan Open Carry, 2,000 rounds. Skip, you gave 1,000. Freedom Firearms gave 2,000 rounds of ammo. Michigan Open Carry, Michigan Gun I mean, it's just been... Just a, a huge gun community effort from Detroit over to the west side where you're at, man. And also, I had firearms instructors come from out of town, travel to Detroit, man. Other states came to Michigan just to participate in this. Imagine, jump on a plane and say, I'm going to fly halfway across the country just to help this crazy dude in Detroit train 814 women for free. Yeah. You know, and I, I get fired up, man, when I get the support from people, especially when you live halfway across the country and you come into Detroit to help me out with this project, man. So I'm still fired up. Yeah. Well, you know, you know, I've done these kinds of events before. I'm mean, similar events, you know, Second Amendment March. And I know how taxing that they are. If you're like me, Rick, it's like you get done with an event like this and you feel totally exhausted but you feel like satisfied you, you know it's like wow i feel good i feel really really good but i feel really really <laughs> tired so how, how do you feel about it right man like you just explained it like thanos in that that previous x-men movie <laughs> when he snapped his finger and everybody like faded away mm -hmm. and suddenly he had that look of satisfaction on his face man that's that's really how it felt you know, because really for like the past three weeks, man, this event and promoting it and organizing it and getting everything set up has been like just, it just consumed my life. But uh, I knew it was going to be worth it. And I just had to suffer and endure and just grind it out until the day comes so that I can look at the results and be satisfied with what we did, man. Yeah. And, uh, 814 women trained with guns. It was outstanding. Yeah. And, yeah, I might have did some public touting that I didn't get my 900, man. But, you know, Mother Nature <laughs> wasn't cooperating. And we had some people that signed up and saw, you know, and it got pretty dicey weather-wise in some areas, man, and they weren't willing to come out. But, uh, you know what, we still moved the needle forward. And, you know what, undaunted, man. I, I, I'm so emboldened. That I'm going to tell people who are listening here if they haven't heard it first. I want a thousand, man. I want a thousand. <laughs> All right. 2020, I want a thousand. Well, you know, I think that's a worthy goal. And quite frankly, I think you can do it. I mean, the rate that you're going, uh, I really think that you, that you that you can, Rick. And I will help uh, again next year. Um, before uh, we get too far in, Rick, what exactly, when, when did this start as far as how many weeks or months in advance did you have to start planning for this? How many people, just, just your guess, how many people helped you with this? Because there just must have been a ton of people. Ah, it, it's, a, it, it's a ton, man. And it, it starts with the gun range. And then after you get a place to actually have it, then you move to the manpower, you know, and you, you get a page up and, you don't necessarily start the day after the conference, but fairly soon, you know, after, you know, the event, you want to at least let people know, hey, I know you guys are tired and I know you're recovering, but hey, you know what? I'm crazy enough to do this again, you know? <laughs> Think about doing it with me again, right? right. 
and you know they'll they'll say yeah you know I feel good we did we did some great work and yeah I'll do it you know and then you he, then oh, like on the event page you you see all these women that say Rick oh I just found out about it or I missed it or I got called in to work mm-hmm. are you going to do this again sometime this year <laughs> and I'm like as much as I would like to this thing is so resource intensive with regards to raw materials guns and 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 manpower it, it, I don't know. I, no, no, I can't do it again this yeah. year. It's going to happen next year. The same protocol date wise as we have established the last four years is going to be the Sunday after Mother's Day. You know, you give your mother her due on Mother's Day and you think, OK, one week from today, we're going to do it again. Rick is crazy enough to shoot 4,000. <laughs> the least we can do is register and show up. Awesome. Well, OK, now, Rick, what exactly? Uh, did the women do? I mean, just take us, take a, take a woman and say, okay, she, she, what she registered online and then she showed up and then, and then what happened from there? Well, they, they come in and then they, uh, they, they come in at their appointed time. I have different, uh, time slots allotted for, for them to line up and come on in. They come in, they, they listen to a rain safety briefing. You know, Tanisha did an awesome job with the rain safety briefing. You know, she gives them an intro. She tells them a lot about, you know, her background and that it wasn't too many years ago when she was, you know, literally in their shoes who were curious about guns or might have, you know, been timid about guns. And and once she gets them warmed up, she starts giving them a range safety briefing. Yeah. You know, the fundamental rules of firearm safety, uh, shooting stances, you know, things that could happen that, it might cause you to freak out a little bit. Like, you know, you want to have that conversation about hot brass oh, yeah. going down your shirt and getting tri- getting trapped in your bra. Mm-hmm. You want to hear about that before it happens because there's a certain protocol you want to execute, right? You don't want to take the gun and start slapping it again against the side of it against your chest. No, <laughs> take your finger off the trigger, keep it in a safe direction, put it down, and then get that hot brass. It'll probably be cold by the time you get it, you know? Yeah, yeah. Because I've had brass travel the full length of my shirt <laughs> through my pants and come out right over my boot. No, you laugh. I'm serious. Yeah, I believe you. I, I've, I've been there. I, I've been there. Red. <clears throat> I mean, you, you get this big red welt or a blister <laughs> on, on your skin. It, 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 heals up. it heals up and it goes away. It's not fatal. Yeah. <laughs> Just don't shoot yourself. Heck, so, yeah. well, and, so we go. That happens. It, it, so we go through that and we recognize all of our sponsors, you know, the major ones anyway. You know, everyone that donated ammo, I think I did a pretty good job of saying who they were. We donate a uh, sponsor, you know, with the gun range, the ammo donors. Uh, gun Owners of America was huge. You know, they came in and gave everyone a hat, you know, and, and came in and, and let us see Eric Pratt it was in the house, in the building, networking with everyone. You know, and then we, we take them up and we line them up to the booth. I mean, we had people all over the place, all the firearms instructors who donated their time. Mm. They're one-on-one in the booth shooting all of that donated ammo through donated guns. You know, give it up to Doug, you know, for, for with the with the guns for us to use, yeah. and uh, and then when they're done, you know, then they come out of the range area and back onto the main floor. Then it's selfie time. We call it <laughs> selfie time, right? All the selfies and the group photos, and then you put it on social media, and then have it do like a feedback loop into itself, and get the other people who were thinking about it or didn't hear about it and get them excited. There's people that didn't go and they see all these pictures, you know, on the event page, you know, my personal page. And just because they let a little rain and a little darkness in the sky, you know, stop them. They see all these other people who were not deterred and who made it and they're kicking themselves like, man, (laughs) I wish I had gone. And I'm thinking as the event organizer, yeah, I wish you had gone too. You know, (laughs) come next year for sure. Yeah. Right. Well, you know, Rick, I I was on your Facebook page this morning and I'm looking through all of these pictures and there's a lot of them. These, These women are just smiling and laughing away. They had an incredible time and it's like it's like a life-changing event for them. 
you know, especially in light it of, is, man. of, you know, you, you mentioned women being killed and, and dumped, you know, they're having their bodies dumped in, in park. There, there's, there's only one thing that can protect you against something like that. And, and that's a, a firearm with some good training. And Rick, that's what you and your team did this past weekend. My thing is, man, you know, is, is to give you at least an option. Yeah. And the, the thing that keeps them from exploring it is that they don't have a gateway or a passageway to get that information. If it makes it simple, tell you what, just come to the range and let me and my, my crew, my squad, we'll take it from there. Absolutely. By the time you leave, you will be, like I tell people, you'll be floating on air. You will feel <laughs> empowered. You will feel confident. And you know what? You might even throw a few dollars on a gun before you leave the gun range. You know? <laughs> there you go. There you go. You are laughing. I, you know, I, I am intentionally not trying to be funny, but I'm just cracking you up. I am so serious. I, I know you're serious, <laughs> and I'm not laughing because I don't think you're right. I'm I'm laughing because you know I see this. I see it myself right. uh, on the west side of the state. Once a right. woman gets excited about shooting, it's like Katie bar the door. Right. Just get out of her way because you're not going to be able to stop her. <laughs> <laughs> right, man. So, you know, it, it's for me, man, it's a labor of love. And uh, it's, I truly enjoy doing it, man. It, I just feel so great. And I feel like I did something really good that can help a lot of people. And I, it really, really, truly makes me feel good about what I did. All right. Well, you hold on to that enthusiasm for the next two minutes, Rick, because we got to take a uh, commercial break here. Um, while uh, we're away, go ahead and check out Rick's Firearm Academy. You just go on Facebook or check out Legally Armed in Detroit. Boy, uh, learn a little bit of background. Twitter, YouTube. Any social media site that matters, I'm there, usually under the handle Detroit CCW. All right, Detroit CCW, not to be confused with a felony. All right, this is Skip Coriel on the Home Defense Show. We're going to be back in two minutes speaking with Rick Ector from Rick's Firearms Academy, legally armed in Detroit. This is Skip Coriel on Home Defense Show. Don't go anywhere. We will be right back. Wouldn't it be wonderful if life was like the movies and the good guys always won? In today's world, if you're forced to use your firearm to protect yourself, you will need protection. Firearms Legal Protection is here for you. FLP provides you with seasoned, experienced attorneys that handle your criminal and civil matters as a result of you protecting yourself. FirearmsLegal.com provides its members with uncapped attorney's fees, bail bond protection, and coverage in all 50 states. We are not a reimbursement plan. You can access uncapped attorney's fees for as low as $10 a month. Firearms Legal members are provided with educational services, training videos, and access to our vast national attorney network. While you're protecting yourself, let Firearms Legal protect you. Listen up, folks. This is important. There are plenty of legal protection services out there, but none will protect you as well as Firearms Legal Protection. This is the one I use and the only one I recommend. Visit firearmslegal.com slash Midwest Tactical and protect your family now. Would you like to take your tactical and marksmanship training to the next level? If the answer is yes, you need to check out Center Shot Indoor Gun Range just south of Grand Rapids, conveniently located off US-131. Center Shot is one of the most advanced firing ranges in Michigan. Center Shot firing lanes have nearly 100 customizable shooting programs to make you better no matter what your skill level. 
Our advanced lanes allow a more immersive training experience to enhance your senses. Controlled lighting and target movement mean that you get the best practice and most fun out of CenterShot Indoor Gun Range. Memberships are available for as low as $150. CenterShot also offers a 10% discount to U.S. military veterans. So, no matter what the weather, hot, cold, or in between, CenterShot Indoor Gun Range is always a perfect 70 degrees. This is where I train every week, and so should you. Find out more by going to centershotgunrange.com or call them at 616-371-7468. Stay safe, and I'll see you at CenterShot Indoor Gun Range. Hey folks, I want to tell you about my new book, Concealed Carry for Christians. More and more people across the country are seeing the dangers in society and are deciding to carry concealed to protect themselves and your family, and that includes people of faith. Our churches are not as safe as they used to be, and that's why I included chapters on forming church safety teams and stopping mass shooters. You can get Concealed Carry for Christians real easy. Just go to Amazon.com, search on Skip Coriel, Concealed Carry for Christians, and it'll pop right up there. Don't put it off any longer. Get Concealed Carry for Christians by yours truly, Skip Coriel. Okay, folks, welcome back to the Home Defense Show. This is your host, Skip Coriel. We are speaking with my friend, my comrade in arms, no pun intended, Rick Ector from Rick's Firearm Academy, legally armed in Detroit. Rick, man, what you did was just an awesome, an awesome thing uh, this past weekend. Um, tell us about some of the, the women, because you must have been on up there on the line with, with some of them. You know, what, what was their reaction? What, what are some of the things they said, some of the things that they did that get you excited about this? You know, the ones that really, well, there's, there's a couple of different categories, man. And there's always one every year in each very different category. Like there's the category of the woman who's not intimidated and not afraid, but just never knew anyone to serve as their gateway into the shooting community. Mm -hmm. You know, it would be perfectly all right and sane for a woman just to walk into a gun range and have, you know, them take care of her and just get empowered from the staff. But most people want a buffer or someone to, like, guide them in and take them into the process. Mm -hmm. But it was a lot of women that fed this archetype who came in, never shot a gun, weren't afraid, but just never, you know, had an opportunity. And... You always see the person, and there were a few of them this time around, you always see the person that never shot a gun ever, yeah. ever in their whole life, and they're just hitting the bullseye, man, just lighting it up because of the absence of the male ego. <laughs> and you know what? I'll tell you. I'll tell you. I'm not a shy guy at all. If anyone actually knows me in person and has met with me and talked with me, I don't have a shy bone in my body, man. I know, I know. But see, <laughs> oh, your personal testimony. That's right. right? Amen. So, I say amen. So the willingness, the willingness of women, you know, to just put aside everything and, and just say, look, I don't know anything about this. Show me, teach me. Mm -hmm. And if you have a competent instructor just guide you through the process, there's no reason why you shouldn't hit the bullseye, yeah. you know? Don't flinch, right? Just smooth pull all the way back. Hold it steady. Don't be scared. You know, it's going to be great. You know, it's not a lot of recoil. They, they over-exaggerate that stuff on TV and in the movies. There's nothing like that whatsoever, you know? And then they do it. And everyone is like, wow. And she's like with this, this target with all the holes in the bullseye going, well, or why are you surprised? I just did what you told me to do, right? <laughs> well, you know, I saw some of the then, targets, some of the, the bullet groupings. <laughs> uh, you got some pretty good shots over there in Detroit. Man, let me tell you, it's, it's the fact that they were willing to cast aside any preconceived notions from the media and from movies about what shooting a gun is like. And then you got those who are just absolutely terrified. That's another archetype that, that we see from time to time, man. I mean, just the look of a gun, you know, is, is intimidating and it, it generates, you know, a lot of trepidation, some fear. But you get a patient instructor who will coax you gently into the process and they take that first shot and they realize, okay, 
it wasn't as bad as I thought. <laughs> and then by the time they make it through their allotted, their allotted shots, they're like, wow, I can't believe I allowed, you know, the media or anti-gun organizations or, you know, Hollywood celebrities tell me that this was an evil and a bad thing. I'm not a bad person. I'm not an evil person. So me having this inanimate object, this tool in my hand and operating it, that doesn't make me a bad person, you know, and, and they it really, what I think in the end, you know, going forward, like it did for me personally, it will shatter so many preconceived notions and thoughts that you have about guns and the people that own them, because you can see yourself as being a gun owner. And if you can say to yourself, I'm not a bad person and I own a gun or I want a gun, then every time someone tells you that gun ownership is bad and evil, you will then question everything else that they're feeding you. So I think it's the gateway to expanding your horizons and realizing that in some cases, you know, the news is filtered to you and it could have even larger political ramifications. But that's another conversation for another day. Well, you know, Rick, you're absolutely right. I mean, but but the thing is, words will only go so far. I mean, if if you have someone, man or woman, who's been brainwashed by the media into thinking that guns are evil, uh, you know, you shouldn't touch them, you shouldn't have them in your house, and, and they've been taught since birth to be terrified of this inanimate object, you can talk to them till you're blue in the face. But exactly. experience will always override someone else's opinion. And exactly once you get them right. on the range, yeah, it's it's like you can't stop them. These, these, are, these are like women. You put them, it's like you, you give them a gun. It's like putting them, you know, in this giant four-wheel drive SUV, you know, on a mud run. And they've got all this power, you know. Right, <laughs> And they, right. they feel good. They feel fantastic. And, you know, who better to train than women because, you know, no matter what else you want to say, women are more vulnerable than men uh, in the general population. I mean, you know, hey, I don't know about you, but that's why they're the favorite. That's why they're the favorite targets of bad guys. Absolutely. I mean, no, no one's going to rape you or I. It's going to be, you know, uh, a woman. And yes, it will be. Boy, you know, talk about uh, a little bit about crime in Detroit. I I was doing a little bit of background on it before the show, and it says that, you know, uh, Detroit murders, the murder rate went down uh, in 2017 and in 2018, but it was just a tiny, tiny bit. And they said the reason it's going down isn't because it's getting safer. It's because Detroit is losing their population base. So, you know, people are moving out. It could be loss of population, depending on who you talk to. These these safety green lights they're installing all over town with these cameras. Mm-hmm. Man, let me tell you, you happen to see a lot of crimes being committed in those green lights anyway. You know what? It, and, and I tell you, you know what? I'm not belittling the program. I'm not being negative. But let me tell you, a bad guy shoving a gun in my face is not going to stop them from robbing me or otherwise victimizing me and or killing me. Yeah, great. It's a nice picture, and good luck catching that guy with that crystal clear (laughs) picture. But you know what? I'm already dead and gone, so, you know, it's kind of like after the fact. You know, why not be more proactive and get in front of this thing at the start or at the front? But you know what? When we talk about stats, we can argue back and forth about – whether, you know, the murders really happen or, you know, do they happen in, in, with the frequency that's being published? You know, are we playing games with the numbers? You know, that, whatever. The point is that I'm making right here on stats. If you look at the stats going back 10, 12, 15 years, there's one stat that there is no appreciable uh, progress being made, and that's on the rape of women. You know what? You're still going to have this astronomical victimization and rape of women that's going to happen every year. And I think when the crime stats come out, they don't even mention the rape category. It's almost like it doesn't exist. But we have a serious rape problem in Detroit and in Metro Detroit, and it needs to be addressed. 
And you know what? Since it can't be done on the back end, let's do it on the front end. Let's teach women about firearm safety. Let's teach them about marksmanship, defensive accuracy, and let's empower them to shut it down when it happens. Well, and I think we kind of owe it to them as well. I mean, this probably sounds a little stupid, but, you know, just because I'm a man, I, I kind of feel... I feel bad, you know, ashamed of my gender, you know, for for being the the way that they are. It's just a tiny well, little segment us, of us. Man. But... It's, it's, it's the tiny segment of, of the male gender that's out here victimizing and brutalizing women and raping them. You know, it, it only takes one. But, you know, why not but... empower these women to do something? Well, yeah, that that's like the ultimate accountability. You know, you you go up and hassle a a woman, try to rape her, and she sticks a thirty eight special in your face. I mean that that's like the the mother of all cold showers, right? So uh, at least it it at least gives them a fighting chance. Which man, it, I am it just does. all for. It does. Um, it what does. about gang activity in in Detroit? Um, you know, how is that a big problem? Is is that uh, related at all to, to the rape or the murder rate for, for women in the I, I, I really can't describe, you know, that relationship or whether there is a relationship. You know, I like I said, I defer to the professionals. You know, we have a local police department. From what I understand, they have a local gang enforcement unit that works on that. You know, gangs are a huge problem in other large metropolitan areas all over the country. We don't seem to have the gang problem that other cities do, but I do know locally we have a unit that's that's tasked with addressing that problem. And to the extent mm-hmm. that uh, many of us don't really, you know, come into contact with gangs, you know what, that's probably why, because we got a unit out there that's working on it and addressing it. My thing is... I don't want anyone to ever think that I'm anti-police. I believe they are good. I believe that they are needed. They are necessary. But when we talk about places like Detroit, I don't think that we have the resources. We have the manpower. We have the money that we should have allocated. And then when you look at some people downtown, it was in a newspaper article uh, maybe a week or so ago, they're going to start taking the few officers that we have and spending uh, more of them spending more time in downtown, you know, to support and protect that area where I guess all the the retail and, and the consumerism and tourism is going to. And I think that as a consequence, that's just going to leave a law enforcement void in, in the neighborhoods. You know what? That's what they do is outside of my control, man. Mm-hmm. What I can do, what I can control, is I can take ownership of my safety. What I can do, I can empower other people to do that. And I'm not saying that the police are unnecessary and not needed, because I believe they are. But you know what? Until they can get there, until they can respond, until they can deal with any resource issues that they may have in conjunction with the high relative crime rate that we have in the city, there is a whole lot that each and every one of us can do as individuals to take on a more active role in our personal protection. Oh, Rick, I certainly agree with you. I mean, you've got a real job. I mean, you really, uh, you you bit off a lot here. And it's not just your responsibility. It's everyone's responsibility, every community's responsibility. You know, I was listening to to news reports, you know, coming out of Detroit about this latest uh, woman who was murdered. And I no. saw, I, I you know, I'm listening to the 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 people in the community, and and it's like it's like they're they're angry, um, a little bit afraid, but I think it was mostly anger that these things are are happening, and they they didn't seem like wusses to me. I I, I think they're they're capable of protecting themselves, like you said. They need a gateway. They need a mentor, someone who can exactly. take them by the hand and say, hey, it's not that tough. This is not brain surgery. Let me show you how mm-hmm. to do it. And, boy, this is a good opportunity for you, Rick. You know, the thing is, man, is that I've been out here pounding the pavements about taking on a more active role in your personal protection. And for me to suggest empowering people, that does not in any way attack 
you know, the government or our governmental agencies, local law enforcement. No, it doesn't. There's only so many of them to go so far in a city that's geographically this big, however much that the actual population is shrinking. The resources that we have, you know what, there aren't enough. And until that is corrected or increased or depending on what political opinion you have as to how much money should be allocated to police and how many officers on the street, there is a whole lot we can do to empower and protect ourselves, you know, because numerous court decisions by the Supreme Court have handed down rulings that state when you get down to it, it is not the police departments or the job of the police to prevent you from being a crime victim. If you get robbed, you beat up, if you're raped or killed, it is not the police department's responsibility that that happened. They are there as a resource to be summoned for assistance to respond and protect the general law and order and enforce the rules. If you yeah. want to keep someone from raping you, shoot them. Yeah, you know, Rick, you're you're right. You know, we we refer to to police. Uh, as first responders, but they're really second responders. The first responders are these women who are being raped and murdered. They're the ones that are there first. And boy, if if you can train them and you can arm them and you can give them a chance, you know, then, then they can shoot them. They can protect themselves and their families. Uh, I tell you, you know, a woman with a gun and some good training, give her a warrior mindset, some situational mm-hmm. awareness, and boy, Rick, that's it you're doing the Lord's work. It doesn't even have to be. It doesn't have to be a so-called warrior mindset. The maternal instinct of a woman with a child is to protect my child, even if it means to sacrifice myself. Okay. Yeah. Well, take that same mindset and give her a gun. Give her a fighting chance <laughs> to be successful. That's right. Yeah. You know. Yeah, you're absolutely that's what I'm right. Saying. Well, Rick. All right. Um, talk about how people can get a hold of you, how they can view the results, all these pictures that you're talking about uh, for this for your event. You know, I, I'm all over the Internet, uh, you, uh, social media, whether it's Facebook or whether it's Twitter, it's YouTube, Instagram. My user ID is Detroit CCW. Uh, my email address, if you want to get a hold of me, it's DetroitCCW at gmail.com. I'm everywhere, literally. And I'm not, you know, got the big head or anything, but I've been doing this for a while. <laughs> Google Rick, R-I-C-K, last name, Hector, E-C-T-O-R. There's no way in the world you're going to miss me. It's not that I'm necessarily all that great. Even though I am, I've been doing this for a long <laughs> time, and I have a long trail that goes out for years of the things I've been doing to yeah. empower my fellow citizens, especially women. Oh, that's awesome. Rick, very, very awesome. Folks, I highly recommend that you reach out to Rick Ector and you know check out this program that he did. Go on his Facebook page. It is just awesome. Legally Armed in Detroit. You know, he's doing a really, really good job, and... He's going to do an even better job next year. I see you breaking. I want a thousand, thousand. man. You're going to you're going to do it. I'm fired up. I'm fired up, man. I want a thousand. <laughs> All right. Well, go ahead, take a nap. Take a nap, you know, half hour. <laughs> I'm and old then enough be to take a nap, right? Yes. <laughs> okay. Well, Rick, Rick, thank you very, very much for. Man, what you thank guys you. Did it's this always weekend. a pleasure for you to get me on, man. I, I, I truly enjoy being here. I, I thank you for the platform. Truly. Hey, not a problem. I enjoy talking to you because you're you're so much fun and you're just a good guy. <laughs> so, Rick. Right. Thank you yes. very much for being on the Home Defense Show today. Hey man, my pleasure. Thank you. All right, folks, we got another two-minute break coming up here. While we're away, go ahead and check out Legally Armed in Detroit on Facebook. And then uh, check out our sponsors, firearmslegal.com slash Midwest Tactical. And then also centershotgunrange.com. Check out Centershot Indoor Gun Range, where it's always a perfect 70 degrees. This is Skip Coriel on Home Defense Show. Don't go anywhere. We will be right back.
Welcome to my dad's home defense radio show. You're gonna love it. This is Colonel Danny Gillum. I host Front Lines of Freedom, a weekly syndicated military talk radio show. One of my co-hosts is Skip Coriel, the host of this show. We cover things that impact military and veteran communities, and we do it from the veteran's perspective. The show is broadcast across the nation and is also available as a podcast on our website, frontlinesoffreedom.com. Please join Skip and me weekly on Front Lines of Freedom. Hey, Skip, it's time for our Armed America Report. What do you have? All of us here at Frontlines of Freedom believe strongly in your right to keep and bear arms for protection of yourself and your family. Listen, folks, evil exists. Someday evil will visit your door. Will you be ready? If not, now is the time to start looking into it and learning the skills necessary to protect the ones you love. What's the story this week, Roland? Recently in Minneapolis, Minnesota, a mob of 8 to 10 males welding hammers and iron bars descended upon bystanders at the East Bank Light Rail Station, injuring several, according to police. The incident was apparently reported to 911 just before 10 p.m. on Friday. A 9.48 p.m. Facebook post on the 2nd Precinct Minneapolis Crime Watch page said that the University of Minnesota Police were requesting assistance from the Minneapolis Police and Metro Transit Police for a group of 8 to 10 males chasing people with hammers and that some people were injured. A Facebook post a minute later on the Minneapolis Scanner page said that three police departments were responding to multiple 911 calls, about 10 to 12 Somali teen males armed with hammers chasing people, also with several injured reports. After doing a little research, I discovered that all the attackers were of Somali descent and all were ages 12 to 15 years old. As a 61-year-old man, I find that disturbing. As a self-defense pistol instructor, I follow crime trends in America very closely, and I can tell you that young people are becoming more and more violent, and they are willing to attack grown adults on a regular basis. According to FBI crime stats, the person most likely to attack you is a male between the ages of 15 and 34. It appears that age is going down. When teens travel in packs, something called mob mentality kicks in. Teens feel stronger and less inhibited. It's a bit like a drug, where teens are willing to do things they wouldn't otherwise think of. What does this mean to us older folks? One, older adults can no longer expect to be treated with kindness and respect by many of the younger generation. You and I were raised to respect our elders. Older people were to be revered and honored simply by virtue of our life experiences and our wisdom. This is no longer the case. Two, older adults are now being singled out as victims, as easy targets to be preyed upon. Let's face it, we are no longer as strong and fast as we used to be. We can't fight them off physically as well as we used to. Three, we've come to the place in American life where older adults are not safe on the streets. Stay off the streets, especially at night, and travel with friends whenever possible. Always maintain a heightened state of awareness and stay out of high-crime neighborhoods. And four, the police cannot always be there to protect you. Many of my concealed carry students are in their 60s, 70s, and even 80s. Just because you're older doesn't mean you have to roll over and die at the hands of criminals. I highly suggest you develop a personal protection plan that works for you. Consider getting trained and armed with a pistol. If you still have decent eyesight and the strength to pull the trigger, then you don't have to be a victim. If you don't want to carry a gun, then consider pepper spray or a taser. Just make sure to research the laws of your jurisdiction before doing so. But here's the bottom line. This problem is getting worse, and with the breakdown of the family unit, the moral fabric of our nation will continue to decline. But you don't have to let yourself be a victim. Stand up and fight back. Hey folks, I want to tell you about my new book, Concealed Carry for Christians. More and more people across the country are seeing the dangers in society and are deciding to carry concealed to protect themselves and your family, and that includes people of faith. Our churches are not as safe as they used to be, and that's why I included chapters on forming church safety teams and stopping mass shooters. You can get Concealed Carry for Christians real easy. 
Just go to Amazon.com, search on Skip Coriel, Concealed Carry for Christians, and it'll pop right up there. Don't put it off any longer. Get Concealed Carry for Christians by yours truly, Skip Coriel. Okay, folks, welcome back to the Home Defense Show. This is your host, Skip Coriel. Rick Ector, what a guy. I love that man. Well, and I love what he's doing. Can you believe what that guy did? 814 women, you know, geez, taught him how to shoot guns in one single day. And he does it every single year. Well, I will definitely keep my eyes on Rick Ector because he's doing some really, really good things. All right, we got some housekeeping here. You know, I get these emails uh text messages, private messages every single week. And, you know, I should be reading them on the on the air because I get a lot of mail, you know, related to Home Defense Show. But I just keep forgetting. So I'm going to try and be more diligent about that. Uh, we got an email from uh, Paul. He says, uh, good morning. I took your March CPL safety training in Hastings. I have since received my CPL and have a question. What training or certification is needed to get the exempt from prohibited premises authorization? Best regards, Paul. Um, Well, Paul, until we get a different governor, that's uh, not going to happen. We tried to get that through several years ago. Um, We got it passed in the House, passed in the Senate, overwhelmingly, and it went to the Governor Snyder's desk, and he vetoed it. Now we have Governor Whitmer, and she's probably uh, even worse than Governor Snyder was. So, you know, it's a shame. Uh, What what you're talking about there is an enhanced CPL, uh, where if you got an extra eight hours of advanced training, you would uh, be able to carry in the state-mandated pistol-free zones. That's important because 85% of all gun deaths um, caused by mass shooters occur in pistol-free zones. So these pistol-free zones are killing people, but right now there's nothing we can do about that in the state of Michigan. If you want to carry in pistol-free zones, uh, move to Arizona, move to Utah, someplace like that. But we will keep fighting, keep fighting the good fight, we'll keep pushing, and we will wait for our opportunity. In the meantime, hey, you can be uh, a good PR guy, You can go out there, you can carry safe, carry often, and you can just have a good attitude and start winning over your friends and your relatives to the uh, concealed carry lifestyle. All right. Ah, what else we got? Tomorrow. Boy, we're talking uh, May 25 from noon to 4. Center shot indoor gun range. I'm going to have all 14 of my books there. 15 bucks a piece um, and uh, and a signature. Uh, boy, you can bring a check. You can bring cash. You can bring credit, ca- credit card. Uh, you can bring gold, silver. I don't care. Just, uh, you know, come with a smile and a good attitude. Even if you don't want to buy a book, show up. You know, it's always boring when you have a book signing and not very many people come. Uh, because there's no one to talk to. There's going to be a barbecue Uh, There's going to be, you're talking like free food, right? Free food to veterans. That's a good deal. There's going to be fire trucks for the kids, ambulances. I think they've got a a couple of Humvees showing up. Uh, There's going to be an archery shoot for the kids. Uh, There's going to be a a pistol competition for the adults. Uh, It's just a great place to spend a Saturday. So, and uh, the weather's warmer. So come on out, get some good food. Come and talk to me and keep me from getting bored. All right. We are about out of time uh, for this week on the Home Defense Show. But don't forget to check out our sponsors, firearmslegal.com slash Midwest Tactical. See what they can do to help your family should you ever have to use a firearm, actually any weapon, uh, in personal defense. Firearmslegal.com slash Midwest Tactical. And then also check out Center Shot Gun Range. Center Shot Indoor Gun Range, where it's always a perfect 70 degrees. Next week, uh, I'm going to try and have Mark Walters from Armed American Radio. Uh, he's the big syndicated uh, guy. 
And boy, we're going to talk about this controversy. Uh, it's reaching scandal proportions on the NRA, the National Rifle Association. Apparently, uh, Wayne LaPierre has spent a half a million dollars on travel and his wardrobe. And uh, some of the members are upset. We need a strong NRA to battle these antis. Um, but we also need an honest NRA and someone who feels accountable to the membership. So Mark has his opinion. He wrote a pretty good article about it this past week. So we're going to see if we can get Mark on here to expound upon uh, his ideas. Well, okay, folks, that about wraps it up for this week's episode of the Home Defense Show. Until next week, remember your purpose in life is to find something greater than yourself and serve it. Always remember, God, family, country, in that order. It's important how you live, but it's equally important how you die. Your family and the ones you love need your protection, so train, always train, stay alert, stay alive. Until next week on the Home Defense Show, this is your host, Skip Coriel. God bless you, God bless your family, and God bless America. Thank you for joining us this week on The Home Defense Show. Now, get out there and protect the ones you love. We'll see you next week with more of the best in home defense. Bye-bye, boys! Have fun storming the castle!